Today on Schmindian, we're making these. These are called batutas, aka delicious bread balloons. Crispy on the outside, soft and chewy on the inside. This is the greatest use of carbohydrates I've ever come across. Let's make them. Welcome to Schmindian, I'm your host Paul Singh and this is Indian Food Demystified. Today we're talking about one of the greatest street foods in all of India, the humble yet delicious Batuta. Now Batutas are actually one half of one of the greatest street foods in India, which is a combination called Chole Batuta. Chole is an absolutely delightful chickpeas in spicy gravy, it's awesome, and you eat it with the Batuta. Batutas are basically deep fried pizza dough, which is also awesome. These things are good on their own, but when you put them together, you create a marriage of unprecedented, unpretentious deliciousness. Now, if you think deep frying pizza dough is anything other than a great idea, frankly, I can't relate to you. This combination is legendary throughout India. It's available in all the restaurants, the high-end restaurants and the dubbas. Dubbas are sort of little small takeout joints which are littered all over India. They have these too, because everyone loves chole patura. It's the Indian version of fast food, but it's homemade which makes it better. So these little vendors all over India, they can fry up a batuta and some chole in less than 30 seconds and get you right, son. I would take chole and batuta over any of that corporate fast food stuff filled with all those chemicals. Unless you want to sponsor me, corporate fast food people. I'm Indian, I can be bought. Fun fact, chole and batuta is actually extremely popular with the long haul truckers in India for multiple reasons. Number one, it's delicious. Number two, it's cheap. Number three, you can get it anywhere. And it's been said that this combination is fueling the entire supply chain of India because literally all the truck drivers eat this. And the vendors have actually adapted their recipes specifically for the truck drivers. Um, if you eat deep fried pizza dough and some heavy chickpeas and gravy, it's gonna make you sleepy. Let's be honest. So what the vendors did was they created a chole with black tea as the base for the gravy. So that caffeine counteracts the heaviness of it. And so you get filled up calorie wise, but you also stay alert when you're on the road, which is amazing. One day I'll make some black tea chole for you. It's really delicious. Another fun fact about chole patura is that it is also connected to Trinidad and the Caribbean. If you've ever been in a Caribbean takeout spot, Jamaican, Trinidadian, whatever, they always have something on the menu called doubles. A Trinidadian double is a patura with the chole on it and then another patura on top. So you get like a sandwich, like a chole patura sandwich. They're usually snack sized about that big, about two bucks, three bucks, really cheap. But I remember as a young man going into Caribbean takeout spots in Toronto and ordering doubles just for a snack. And I could never get someone to explain to me why they were called doubles. It looked like just like a little chickpea sandwich. Back then the internet wasn't as robust with information as it is now, and now you can look it up. But Trinidadian doubles are actually a descendant of this dish. Now you're probably thinking, how did an Indian dish get to the Caribbean? It's actually an interesting story. It turns out in the 17, 1800s, the British or the Dutch, I'm not sure, some white people from Europe needed cheap labor to go work the sugarcane fields in Trinidad and other Caribbean countries. So they went to India, promised these guys jobs in the Caribbean and a nice life, and then shipped them over there. Once they were over there, the promises may not have been accurate and the conditions weren't very good and they couldn't really leave. So some have compared it to slave labor. I won't do that though, because slavery was really bad. Wasn't good though, wasn't good. And uh, you know what? Europeans out there, it's okay. We forgive you. They brought with them this beloved street food from India, the chole patuta. And the story goes that a restaurant owner or maybe one of the migrant workers took the chole, put it on top of a batuta, put another batuta on top of that and made a sandwich and just, you know, headed back out to the fields. You, know, you gotta get paid, right? And that's why they call it a double because a double is chole patuta with two patutas. So chole patuta, double patuta. That's why it's called double. No Trinidadian person knows this, by the way. I have every place I've gone to to get a double, I've asked them why it's called a double. None of them knows. None of them knows. Also, they might get mad at you for asking. They're kind of notorious for getting mad at customers. But I think it's pretty cool that Trinidad and India have this spiritual connection through food. Anyway, without further ado, let's make these delicious bread balloons so I can eat them.
All right, we're gonna use all these ingredients to make some delicious patudas. We got yeast, we got sugar, we got warm water, salt, olive oil, all-purpose flour, and semolina flour, also known as Susie. First ones at the party are gonna be these three ingredients. Uh, we're gonna activate our yeast, so. We're gonna go two teaspoons of yeast, one teaspoon of sugar, and warm water. There we go. So these three ingredients are all gonna mix together and the yeast is gonna rise and then we're gonna use it to make the dough. Now this is gonna take 10 minutes to rise. You can use that 10 minutes to do whatever you want. But I suggest you use that 10 minutes to call someone you love. Call your mom, dad, girlfriend, daughter, son, whatever it is. Food is about love, God damn it. You make it with love. When you eat it, you feel love. When you make it for someone, you express love. All right, it's been 10 minutes and you can see the yeast has risen. Let's see if I can get a little close-up for you. So you can kind of see that foam on top. Real nice foam. We're gonna take this yeast, turn it into some dough. Big old bowl. First things first, in goes the all-purpose flour. Whoop, whoop. Semolina or Susie. One drizzle of olive oil. Normally you would use a uh, neutral oil for this, but I kind of like the olive oil flavor kind of hiding in the batuta, just in the background like a ghost. You know what I mean? Ghost flavor. Trademark that. And a couple of pinches of salt. We're probably gonna need a little bit extra water, so I've got some here. Just incorporate all of the dry ingredients and the oil, and then start kind of adding little bits. Ooh, that's a lot. That was actually a lot. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Just add it gradually. Work the dough around, knead it. We're gonna create some gluten with our kneading, which is gonna be really tasty and elastic. So we got a nice softball-sized clump of dough, like that. And we're just gonna coat this with some olive oil. Again, creating that ghost flavor. If you live in a warm climate, you can kind of just leave this on the counter, covered and after about an hour, it will have expanded probably twice its size, so that will be ready to go. I'm in Nova Scotia, Canada, it's very cold, so I'm gonna just heat the oven at 350 for five minutes, cut the heat, and then put this in the oven, and the residual heat over an hour will proof it, so, so cover it up. <coughs> Let's take a look at our dough and see how we did. It's nice, poke it, it's very fluffy. It's about twice the size it was before we went in the oven. We're gonna take this dough and set up a little batuta rolling out station. We've got our dough here, olive oil here, which you're gonna need, and a plate to put our rolled out batutas on. And this is our rolling surface. Grab the dough. We're gonna take 60 grams of dough, roll it into a ball. Right, there we go, one dough ball. The whole thing is we're gonna make a small circle with our hands, like that. And then we're gonna use our rolling pin to make that into a larger circle. Small circle. We're gonna coat it with olive oil, both sides, to get that ghost olive oil flavor. I'm so happy right now. These are so delicious to eat. Oh. First two rolls always stick to the rolling pin. After that, it gets better. See? Oh. It doesn't have to be perfectly circular because we're gonna deep fry these and they're gonna blow up. So don't worry too much about the shape. If it's rotis though, you gotta have a circular roti. You have to. Otherwise you're gonna get judged. All right, not very circular, but okay, because that's the size you want. We got some canola oil. We're gonna put that on medium high. We want the oil really hot because these are gonna fry up in like 30 seconds. It's gonna be amazing. Also gonna need some paper towels to put under the patudas to soak up the excess oil. All right, we're gonna put our first batuta in. I like to give my batutas names. This is Gerald, let's see how he does. All right, all right, all right, we're doing good, we're doing good. It looks like he's gonna blow up like a delicious bread balloon. Flip it and toss some oil on top of it. Let's go, Gerald, you can do it. You can blow up, he's blowing up. Gerald, my little baby Gerald is growing up. It's so satisfying when they blow up. Here we go, here we go. Was I lying? Was I, is this not a bread balloon? Look at this thing. Gerald started out here, 
and now we're here. I mean, are you kidding me? I'm so proud of my little Gerald. Now plate that up, add some spicy pickle and a bowl of chili, and let's see what my dad thinks of it. Mm. Good. Good? Really good. Okay. We will stick this are well cooked. Petunas are excellent actually. It's that crispy outside, soft inside, mm -hmm. not overcooked, mm -hmm. which is good because you don't want to burn them. Mm -hmm. And uh, nice color. You know, you don't want too browny, but you want browny, but not too browny. Not too browny? No, not too too dark. Oh, okay. Too dark is not good. Too dark kind of seems like it burnt. Oh, okay. okay. But this one is perfect. Oh, really? Yeah. Would you say this is the best patura you've ever had? Yeah, one of the best. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is the best patura I have for last some time. Today? Today. Oh, today this, for this, sure. This is the best patura? Today okay. for sure. I think for some time I, I have this is the best. Okay. Is Would you say this is my paturas are better than mom's paturas? Uh, yes. Really? Yeah. Because mom's... Mom! Mom? Dad just told me that my patutas are better than your patutas. How do you oh feel about my. that? Well, that happens. What can I say? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, they are better in the sense, as I said, everybody has their own recipe. Yeah. Somebody does a little bit more this way or that way. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have that much brown outside. Yeah, he said he doesn't like the amount you have. He doesn't right? like the amount you brown it. Though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he likes mine better. I so I, I like this way better. I would like to know what Paul is doing. To... I would like to know the secrets. Okay, would you like to try it, Mom? Oh. Sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> mm. 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 Very nice, Paul. Very nice. Mm. Do you think they're better than your patoids? <laughs> oh. Yes. They, oh, you didn't mean that. Mm. You're lying. Oh, come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say? Huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mom. I appreciate it. Okay. Hey, okay. Dad. Oh. You can finish your lunch now. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more, then click over here or over there. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. Have a good day.